Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Relentless Transitions podcast. Uh, thank you for joining us. This week, we're going to be talking about pandemic rescue, self-care for stress management. You know, we're all feeling COVID fatigue. I know I am. How about you, Teresa? Uh, yes, absolutely. It's like, is it over yet? Oh, please make it be over. <laughs> so, so up here in Canada, where I am, we're in total lockdown still. So no restaurants, no, uh, in fact, we're not even supposed to talk to our neighbors, basically, these days where, you know, uh, even in your own backyard, you, you have to be just with people who live in your household. So it, it gets tiring. And, and, you know, when you get when you start feeling that COVID fatigue, you can very easily stop taking care of yourself. Stop. Yes, absolutely. You know, that is that is so interesting that the rules from place to place can be, you know, so different, but we just have to be mindful of the rules in our area. My brother actually lives in Holland and uh, he said that they are on a curfew and a lockdown. So they um, cannot be outside after 8.30 p.m. unless they're walking a dog. And then he said that they have to have an appointment to go to the grocery store, wow. which I can't imagine having an appointment to go to the grocery store. So, um, yeah, their rules are really strict. Fortunately, here uh, in the U.S., just depend. I mean, every area, I think, is um, relaxing um, some of the um, some of the lockdown requirements, but um you know we still do have to social distance and in my area and wear a mask everywhere yeah 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 mm -hmm. and i mean all of that can just be very wearing on your mind it can just it can wear you down and you can stop you can it it's easy just to say the heck with it i'm i'm gonna curl up into a ball and just stop taking care of myself stop taking care of my mental health i can't be bothered i'm tired you know and, and that's really um, the worst thing you can be doing because it's just going to spiral into, you know, a bad, more than a bad day, it'll spiral into a bad week, a bad month. So um, we're going to take some time today and talk about what is self-care and, and how different areas that you can take care of yourself that will boost your morale a little bit. So self-care are any of those behaviors that you can do to take care of your health. Um, and so we're going to just talk about some different areas, um, and I'll jump right in and start with, um, personal hygiene. You know, people say, well, that's not self-care. Well, of course it is. You know, if you take care of your teeth, they're not going to fall out, are they? Um, and, uh, in, in a time when we're, when we're stuck at home and we're spending all our time, uh, just, uh, communicating with people over a telephone or over a zoom call or whatever it's really easy to say ah, i'm not going to wash my hair today i'm not going to do my hair today and um you know that doesn't help your mental um well-being at all so i you know get up your personal take care of your personal hygiene make sure you get up and get dressed every day um if if your makeup Put on some makeup. Make yourself feel special. Um, do your hair nice. Um, don't live like you're not going anywhere. You know, do something. Um, we're we're commuting less. Uh, we have no after school activities, so you have more time to sleep. Sleep an extra thirty minutes a day. Set your alarm clock a little bit later. Take care of your own personal hygiene. Um, I know one thing you, you like, Teresa, is, is moisturizing and getting your nails done. You know, I'm not a girly girl, so all of that kind of isn't part of my normal routine, but if it's part of your normal routine, take care of it, right? Yes. And now that you're wearing your lipstick now, yeah. I'm so sorry, because you know, my office assistant every yeah. time <laughs> he needs to get his voice in here about yeah. his self-care yeah. and yeah. that involves him getting his head massaged at some point during the day and you know what if that is something that's not like in the personal hygiene but you can throw that in there things that bring you joy yeah. uh, so he enjoys that but yes definitely you're and I know <laughs> for me I almost laughed out when you talked about uh, you know, staying at home and you're acting like you just have nowhere to go. Cause I'm gonna tell you, my hair has been wrapped up in a, <laughs> in a scarf. <laughs> like, 
like every day. It's like, do you even have hair underneath there, you know? And and wearing like the the big um, uh, warm ups, uh, you know, stuff like that. So yes, actually, kind of saying, okay, freshen up. One day I looked in the in the um, in the mirror and I was like, what in the world? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness that we record these uh, podcasts um, on Zoom and, and <laughs> yeah, we have stuff, right? Because <laughs> we put clothes on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know, another way that we can um, just take care of ourselves and really just make it personal. You know, I love to just make things fun, but really through our nutrition. You know, we're we're at home. Try some new foods and give yourself some good food. I we have a big farmers market here, and I like to go to the farmers market. And I do. I make everything fun, and I'll go in there and I'll just pick up, <laughs> you know, some fruit or some vegetable that I've never even eaten before. Sometimes I'll, even though I'm reading what it says it is, I don't really know what that is. And I'll take a picture of it and send the picture to my mom. And it's so funny because sometimes she'll say, no, don't get it, whatever it is. <laughs> Just put it down. <laughs> but, um, you know, I try new things, but give yourself some good food. Don't just snack 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 uh, sodas and potato chips and cookies or, you know, just cooking really heavy dinners or heavy meals, give yourself some fresh fruits and vegetables, drink more water. You would just be amazed at how um, much just incorporating more water uh, into your daily uh, nutrition, how that can help you. It can help you to really have that glowy skin. I can be a testament to that. It helps with your skin. It can help with your mood. It can help to cleanse your body. And one way that I get more water in, now this is a, this is a, a, a tip and it does work. When I'm sitting at my desk, you know how you have, um, when you purchase your glasses uh, from uh, you know the store, you have that tall glass and you have the little short glass. I have one of the short glasses on my, you can see it here, yeah. on my uh, desk. And I actually sit here and I pour water in it. And every hour at the top of the hour, I drink this glass mm. and it's a smaller glass. So I guess mentally it doesn't seem like I'm drinking a lot, but really over the course, if you think of like, it's really an eight ounce glass. Yeah. So by the time I get through, I've drank almost a gallon of water. Yeah. Um, so how do you, do you, do you set a timer to remind yourself or, or it just, kind of organically happens you know now in the beginning yes I did set my timer for the top of the hour and my phone will allow you to you know schedule like four up to four different so I would just you know at every hour it would ring now pretty much organically I'm kind of mindful and as I'm working on projects at my desk I'll have a tendency to at the end of a project I will just kind of glance at the clock and if it's the top of the hour I mean if I'm if I go over a minute or two or you know before then I'll go ahead and drink it but I that's what I do I keep this glass uh, on my desk and I have a gallon of water uh, by my desk and I just keep it filled up and I drink it every hour on the hour and so that really helps or also putting like uh, make it interesting put like fruit in it mm, yeah. you know to have that fruit and inf fruit infused water and even if the taste of the fruit doesn't go in there like strawberries and things at least it looks really you know interesting right I have if you put, get hungry, you have a healthy snack, in. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, you know, and another part of, of this um, picture of taking care of your, your physical health is to actually make sure you keep up with your doctor's appointments and uh, don't ignore, you know, just because... Um, just because we're trying to stay out of hospitals and, and everything, don't ignore your regular annual exams that are required. Um, you know, doctors are set up to handle these things. And, um, and so are all the laboratories where they're doing all the testing. They know what to do. They know how to handle it. It is safe. 
to get out there and and keep following those um, regular testing that you should be doing. Um, so don't lose touch with your doctors. Um, knowing all, also uh, as part of this is to keep abreast of what the public health, your local public health authorities are talking about. You know, should you be wearing a mask? Should you be hand, you know, hand sanitizer, masks, gloves, whatever? Listen to your local public health authorities. They're authorities for a reason. They know how to keep you healthy. Um, so um, it's really important to make sure you um, have those COVID supplies on hand to protect your your health. It's it's part of keeping yourself healthy. Yes, and and if you are an overachiever. <laughs> Or a former nurse. <laughs> <laughs> like myself. <laughs> have your first aid kit <laughs> in your car. I have a little box in the back of my car and I have first aid kit and I have all of my COVID supplies. I have masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, and I even have some extra masks in there for other people should I run into a situation where someone doesn't have it and they need it. Um, so having those things, but another thing I was thinking about with the, um, with your physical health is to think about not just your regular primary care physician appointments, but go ahead and have those appointments on those other things that are not necessarily, um, you know, just immediate need things, but things such as having your eye appointment or having uh, following up with your dentist. Because I know at the start of the pandemic, that's what we were all talking about. Like, oh my goodness, go and have these things done. And I'm so glad that I did because my dentist still has not returned to his full calendar of service. I mean, they're they're only open a few days uh, during the week. Their hours are very limited. So for those types of things, just go ahead and get those done, things done and get them done out of the way. And another trick um, is our tip is for your physician, ask if you are taking any medications, ask for your prescriptions uh, in a 90 day supply. Yeah. Uh, that will keep you from having to go out to the pharmacy, you know, every month. And typically most doctors, or at least here in the U.S., if they give you a 90-day supply, they'll go ahead and make those prescriptions good for an entire year. So, you know, if there are any changes um, with your, uh, your physician as far as availability of appointments, as far as your medicines, you will be good. Yeah, good point. Because the the number of appointments they're taking every day has reduced because yes. they have to follow the the COVID protocols, right? Mm -hmm. They have to sanitize after everybody comes into the office. They yes. can only have one or two people in their waiting rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, and some doctors are doing a combination of in person and over the phone consultations. So, yes, um, it it may take a little bit longer to get those appointments at your dentist, at your eye doctor, and stuff because they just physically cannot fit everybody in, um, given that they have to sanitize. After yes, and and you know, for the dentist and eye doctor and ear doctors, they're considering those appointments to be elective, as opposed to being essential. Yes. I mean, my, here. my, uh, my dentist office was closed for months. They yeah. weren't seeing anyone. So, um, so yes, go ahead and get those things done and out of the way. So that way, um, you will be good. And that can contribute to your not physical, not only physical self-care, but mental, uh, self-care as well, because, when I know that everything has been checked out and there's yeah. not a pending problem or looming problem, uh, yeah. then I, you know, feel more at peace. Yeah. Um, another way to take care of your physical health, though, is to take advantage of now that we are, you know, at home or we're not going into the office as much as we used to, taking some time to increase your physical activity. You know, maybe going out and walking in the park. Uh, since the pandemic started, I've, I've become a park walker. So I go out into the park and it's just really nice uh, to just pay attention to the trees. Um, and I, I'm not uh, big on wearing headphones, but what I do is I, I, I'm kind of half and half. I wear an earpiece in one ear 
And so I'm listening to something though that is very positive, whether it is music or a great podcast or a great YouTube um, motivational or inspirational uh, person, then I'm listening to that as I am out walking. Um, you know, take some time to just kind of disconnect. I, I don't uh, encourage utilizing that time to, uh, you know, hold work conversations or uh, talk to those people who have negative energy. You know, they that can wait for that 30 minutes to an hour while you're out, just kind of taking uh, part in nature. And I, 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 now I'm pretty sure that you will feel much better uh, after you do that. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not a, I hate exercise. I, I really do. I, <laughs> I hate going to the gym. I hate, I, I do. I do. Are you supposed I, to say that? I, I don't think you're supposed to say that. <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't, I do go when, when mm. the gyms are open, I have a gym membership. I go, you know, two, three times a week. I should be doing it. I should be doing it more than two times a week. And some, <laughs> some weeks it's three, some weeks it's two, but, um, uh, and, and that right now where I am is impossible. Like going mm -hmm. to the gym is not an option. It's my gym has been closed since like September or something like that. Um, I, I, I think they're going bankrupt, but um, uh, there are other ways to become physical inside if you can't get outside and, you know, dance, put on some music and dance, mm -hmm. um, find some sort of exercise videos. There are all kinds of free videos out there on YouTube find some watch a bunch until you say hey i am motivated to do this one and start doing it you know mm -hmm. you don't have to invest a lot of money in that home gym equipment or anything there are options out there for you to stay active i mean one of my favorite things to do quite frankly is to dance and and i just put on the music and you know i'm often doing it while i'm making dinner but mm -hmm. I'm moving, you know, I'm moving. And so um, there are ways to stay active inside if you can't get outside. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's all part of that self care thing. Um, another really important self care thing would come under sort of mental self care. Um, and that has to do with um, accomplishing something take on take on a new project of some sort. Uh, that you find inspiring. Um, learn a new language, uh, do a 10,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, you know, something that you find um, at the end, you'll say, wow, I feel great because I've accomplished something. Um, take the time to declutter areas of your life, clean out that junk drawer. We all have our junk drawers, clean it out. Um, uh, clean out your closet uh declutter even on your computer you can declutter declutter your inbox Absolutely. unsubscribe to all those annoying email lists that you subscribe to at some point in your life and that you never open those emails i mean i'm a bad one for this i think i on average have about 90 to 100 unopened emails in my inbox um you know take care of it so that um that's not weighing on your mind um Think of something that you've been wanting to tackle for a really, really long time um, and just kept putting it off. We have some extra time now because we're not going out and being nearly as active as we used to be. Take on that task. Mm -hmm. um, get it done. Um, the other um, thing that you can do computer-wise is to um, check your... Um, security, your online security thing, clean up your passwords. If you're like me, um, you've probably reused some passwords pretty frequently. Well, now would be a good time to create some new passwords for you and, and, and up your online security. Again, we all have time. These are little things that you can accomplish that at the end of the day, you can say, wow, I did something good, cleared my brain of the clutter um, I've also physically cleared some clutter, cutters, <laughs> clutter. <laughs> now you're getting dangerous talking about changing passwords. So be sure that if you change any passwords that you have a place where you're writing them down exactly. <laughs> <laughs> until you get into the habit of using 
uh, these new passwords, but there was something that you uh, said that actually made me go back to like nutrition when you were saying, you know, you don't have to uh, buy like so much with nutrition. If you're going to try a new fruit or a new vegetable, just buy one. It's, it's really not expensive. You don't have to go in and buy an entire bag or many or several pounds. Just try one. And then that way, you know, if you don't like it, guess what? Just throw it out. Uh, here at my house, we say throw it over the deck. <laughs> if it doesn't taste good, throw it over the deck. So that's uh, definitely. And that leads me into talking about financial self-care. Now, you know, this one can be, I could call it a, a giant, you know, if, if we really haven't been too mindful about our finances um, or not so in tune, there are some of us who we just have our finances all mapped out down to the penny. We've already thought about our future, but many of us are not necessarily in this boat. So this is a great, great time to just take inventory of where you are financially. And you don't have to tackle the whole thing, you know, all at once, but some things that you can, um, you know, take care of over time. Number one, first, just see where are you. Balance your, um, balance all of your accounts, your checking accounts, your savings account. If you have any investments out there, check in and see what's going on with them. Um, you can do things like definitely during the pandemic, make sure that you have cash on hand. That is, I am a nurse by profession, and that's something that we tell, have told all of our clients. Make sure that you have cash on hand, and I'm talking about cash that you can put your hands on, not cash that's on your ATM card, not cash that's at the bank where you got to go to the bank and get it out, because, you know, when the pandemic was announced, we didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, what if the bank was closed? What if something happened digitally where we couldn't get access to? What if your there something went wrong with your car and you needed to get Uber? And you know, just what if something was happening and you could not utilize a credit card? So it is great to have cash on hand. So some cash doesn't have to be the whole bank or all the money that you have, but have cash um, that you can actually put your hands on. Another thing, uh, um, we're not going out to eat as much. So that's a great savings. But then don't, um, don't exchange that for now ordering absolutely everything out plus paying a delivery fee. <laughs> so, you know, prepare uh, some of your meals at home um, and, and that also can help you with your nutrition and with your physical health, because you know exactly what you are putting in them. I, in your meals, I have, uh, created this whole list of recipes. I call the whole thing dump cake. And that is every single thing that I prepare, it can be prepared in one dish. <laughs> so I have many of these dishes and I share these with my girlfriends and they're, they are all like, give us a new dump cake recipe, but something that can just go um, into one bowl. Another thing, make decisions, um, you know, just have a conversation. If you're single, a conversation with yourself. If you have family that is within your house, talk about it and make decisions about the worst case scenarios. So what would happen if you lost your job? Here we are in the midst of the pandemic. A lot of people have lost their jobs or their hours have been cut or wages have been cut. People are taking pay cuts in order for the whole company to stay afloat. So in worst case scenario, if something happened to your home and you had to move out or what if something happened to a friend's home or a family member's home, and they now needed a place to, they now need a place to stay. Talk about this before anything happens. So that way, you know, hey, if something happens to our home and we have to leave for whatever the reason may be, where can we go and stay? You know what? If something happens to this group of people and they need to come and stay with us, you know, would that be okay with us? Think about who, if they asked you if they could come and stay, it really wouldn't be okay. <laughs> and you know that if something happened, they're going to ask you. 
think about that too. You know, how are you going to handle that? Because we're in the middle of the pandemic and we're not trying to lose any friends. So, you know, there, there can be a nice way to say, hmm, no, I'm sorry. So, but you have to be prepared. So think about those worst case scenarios. And then as Rosalind said, de declutter. So financially, you know, all those extra papers or, or copies of billing statements or things that you just no longer need, get rid of those things. Get organized with your finances because believe it or not, clutter in your finances can cost you way more money. Um, organize your pantry. Not knowing what food you do have available can cost you, cost you money because that can cause you to over uh, overspend. I attended a conference once and this lady said, you want to know, uh, you want to go on a luxury vacation? She said, open up your pantry. Your vacation money is in that pantry. And I thought, oh my goodness. She said, why do you need four boxes of cereal and all four of the boxes are open? You know, so, you know, buy what it is that you need and don't operate so much in excess. So those are some great tips, uh, some things that we actually um, employed during this pandemic to help us uh, financially. Pay attention to um, certain foods. Like for instance, um, I bought 50 pounds of beans and 50 pounds of rice. Now, you might be thinking like I was thinking, what in the world? But I noticed as I was going out shopping, you know, when they said the pandemic is coming, there's going to be a food shortage or um, prices are going to go up. I was running around thinking, oh my gosh, you know, so you're running to the store, you're trying to buy absolutely everything that you can. So now you have a $500 grocery bill where you normally had a $100 one. And so now you spent like all this extra money. But I noticed that um, they started putting a limitation on rice and beans. And I was thinking, and I was going to this warehouse place and 50 pounds of bag, 50 pound bags of rice and beans, they would have a sign saying only one bag. Well, I'm thinking, what in the world is somebody doing with that much rice and beans? But you know what? When I finally figured it out, I couldn't wait to get to the store. <laughs> and I bought a 50 pound bag of rice, 50 pound bag of beans, and I bought some seasonings and butter, spent $38 and something cents. And guess what? I have had peace of mind since that day because I know that with those rice and beans, whether it's what we want to eat or not, yeah. we will not be hungry. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't have to stand in the food line or any of that because we have that those rice and beans. So we haven't opened them up yet. So I said, once the pandemic is over, all of my friends for Christmas, <laughs> are getting, see, I told you, I keep it fun here. They're getting like a nice little container with some rice on the bottom, topped with some colorful beans. <laughs> but, um, but really, I did tell them all that though. But it, and all of my, you know, my friends, we created another thing that we did was we created what's called our, we call it our insider circle. So those are people that we know that we can depend on. So there are, there are eight of us in this circle. We made a pact that, hey, if you need something, you can depend on me. I know that they know that if they need something, they can depend on me. That also gave, uh, gave me some peace of mind financially because I knew that these were people who had the resources to help me if I actually needed help. I really do think this is a great time. I mean, everything I've heard um, is that up here in Canada, because we are so restricted in what we can do, um, a lot of people have money in the bank that they've never had before because they aren't going out and buying those $7 cappuccinos anymore mm -hmm. two or three times a day. You know, they're not going on vacations. They're not going to the movies. They have, they have more money in the bank. And, you know, if you have that money extra for the first time in your life, you need to be using it, investing it, thinking about your future. It's a great opportunity to, mm -hmm. to start that rainy day fund right um yes so the it next is time something like this happens 
you've got that rainy day fund. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Um, you know, one thing that we did was we took the time to create a financial vision board. You know, when you ever you hear about vision vision boards, most of us think about the very beginning of the year and we're, we're coming up with our New Year's resolutions and what are we going to do for the year? But we created a vision board specific around our finances create excitement, you know, around your money, you know, how can it work better for you? How can you enjoy your hard work even more? And believe it or not, even having a strategic plan around things that are fun, such as vacations, can actually save you money. Because if you prepare ahead of time, and you know, throughout the whole year, Uh, on June this day, we want to go here on this day, then you can start looking for those discounts and things much earlier um, and probably get some better discounts, better prices. Yeah. So all of this financial stuff may seem, you you know, people may say, oh, this is a stretch. How is this self-care? But the truth is that, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's part of the thing that weighs on you um, whether you're thinking about it consciously or not, it, it's part of the thing that weighs on you. And and if your if your finances are in order, um, you know, it, it it relieves some of that stress, right? It, so, it, I, I am telling you, honey, when my money ain't right, and whether this is correct English or not. Things I am not a happy person <laughs> when you know when I'm nervous about the money. That I mean, that really um, you know, and I mean, problems financially cause problems everywhere, right? It can cause problems in your relationship. It can cause uh, it can impact your decision about going to the doctor. You know, are you going to have a copay? Do you have the copay money? You know, all of those things can be at, impacted by. Uh, finances. Another thing to think about, and I think this is my last tip uh, that's coming to mind about finances, is um, especially during the pandemic, but even beyond. And we're we're the tips that we're sharing with you today are things that we we said pandemic rescue, um, and this is a great time to talk about it. But these are things that can far surpass the pandemic because once we are out of the pandemic, I am still so excited that I have my insider circle, you know, that all of these things that I previously talked about, but one additional thing is to have a, have copies of important documents, Mm -hmm. you know, things such as it might not seem exactly tied to finance, but it is things like your driver's license, your social security card, your uh, important financial papers, that you know you might need if something happened if somebody came to the the police showed up at the door and said hey there's a gas leak in your subdivision and you need to clear out and you only have five minutes you know put it in uh put these things in something that's lightweight in a centralized location where you can grab it and go that will also give you great great Uh, peace of mind financially, uh, you know that you have all of your things with you as opposed to some things being over here, some things being over there, and you're trying to run around and gather everybody together. So now that we've handled all the the heavy duty self care. Yes. Oh my goodness. Some of the fun self care yeah. stuff. Okay, Teresa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a, that was a that was a tough one, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, you know things that um, just are fun where you can just unwind, uh, like playing board games at home or building a jigsaw puzzle or cooking. If you love cooking, get into the kitchen and create something. Um, if you're if you're crafty, um, you know get some craft stuff from somewhere and create something out of your mind. Or uh, if you like to paint, do some painting. Um, If you like dancing, dance. Um, Listen to music that you find uplifting. Uh, Learn to play a a musical instrument. Or if you play a musical instrument, take some time now to actually enjoy that pastime. So these are all like fun little pastimes that you can do that actually make you feel good. Um, Some other things um, are you know, what I call more soul centering activities, 
like journaling or meditation, prayer, mindful listening, listen to the silence. What do you hear? What can you hear? Like right now, as we're recording this podcast, I can hear some birds. The sun has come out here finally. Yes. And, and you know, take the time to connect to the sounds around you. Um, that's soul centering stuff. Uh, observe nature, um, repeat positive mantras and positive affirmations to yourself. All these soul centering things can really uplift your mood if you're feeling that COVID fatigue. Um, escape reality. I love this one. Turn off the social media scroll, you know, stop watching the 24 hour newsreel. It's just going to depress you. Life, the world out there is not a pretty place right now. So don't spend a lot of time. It will suck the energy out of you. Mm -hmm. um, instead, listening, listen to positive and inspiring podcasts or, or audio books, read something, escape reality, watch funny videos or comedy series, you know, do something that really takes you away from the reality of of living in the pandemic um it will it will uplift you i promise you that and i know teresa has one thing that she loves to do um she has this home spa <laughs> atmosphere she likes to create for herself so tell us about your home spa <laughs> days teresa yes definitely so i am all about the pamper sessions so set aside time for yourself. So at night, you know, if you enjoy bathing, then take that bath. If you're a shower person, give yourself a few more minutes uh, for that shower. But I really love to take these uh, hot bubble baths. So, you know, it's all about the bubbles, bath bombs, bath salts, fragrances that you really enjoy. Light a candle. Uh, one thing that I have started to do for myself, I really love flowers. And I told my husband, I said, you know what? I want to have a fresh uh, bouquet of flowers every month, you know, uh, at least every month. And I want to open my eyes in my bedroom and I want to see fresh flowers. So I'm very conscientious of that. When I go out, which is not often but when I do I buy myself uh, some flowers um, most times they're already put together the other day I bought some where I have to put it together myself so oh lord wish me luck because <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm doing however um, my husband's pretty good at it so I asked him to help me but I just kind of went through and looked at all of the different flowers that they had and I just chose the ones that I was really really drawn to so I'm excited Excited to see how that um, that turns out. Um, I spend time moisturizing. That's my new thing. Is really taking time, you know. <laughs> I have been looking around like I need a moisturizing uh, routine. So I have been uh, working on that. And I think I've connected with my older self and my younger self at the same time uh, because I am now sitting on my deck much more. And I bought myself two rocking chairs so that my husband could be out there with me. And we're sitting out there. We've lived in this house, I, I don't know, maybe about eight years now. And, and now we're sitting on the deck. You know, we're sitting on the deck and we're in rocking chairs, you know, no doubt. And uh, then my younger self, I have reconnected to cartoons. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think I was always an avid reader um, and I let it go by the wayside. I, I didn't read a lot for a long time. And what I did read was all about coaching, was all about business, you know, and um, I'm really making a conscious effort during this pandemic time. I, I, we watch about an hour of TV a night. We're very, very, uh, it just, that's what we've just gotten into this habit. We, you know, we have dinner, we watch an hour or so of TV, escapist TV of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and then I come back upstairs and because our TV's in our basement and um, we have, uh, we still have time to read before you know lights out and and so you know i'm connecting with historical 
fiction again. I read a book recently based uh, starting in this, you know, in the seventies, the era about when I grew up and, and uh, they're talking about music I understand and music I connected to and, and it's just something to escape. And, and, you know, so it, it's important to take those, even when in there, even when you're not suffering from COVID fatigue, it is important to take those little escapes from reality um, as, you know, as often as you can. So um, our, you know, I think that's, um, that's um, where we can wrap this up today, Teresa. So what, what takeaway um, do you have for us about self-care, Teresa? You know, um, I have a mantra. Uh, I made it up, but I live by it. And it is to remember that you are the most important piece of your life's puzzle. Without you, your life's puzzle will always have a hole in it. It'll never be complete without you. So it is important for you to take care of yourself as much as you give to others. It is important for you to take care of yourself because guess what? You're very needed, you know, obviously so because you're having to expend all this energy on others. So that is the takeaway um, for today. So take time to take care of yourself. And when we um, talk about time, Think about like your time management, actually set aside time. It's very important to set aside that one, even if you're so, so busy, all you can squeeze out is 30 minutes, but I really recommend one to two hours. That is just time designated for you. So if you are a single person and you live at home, break away from all of those, those things that you have to do and take time to just do what you want to do, or guess what? Nothing at all. If you have a family at home, talk to them about it and let them know, hey, between seven and eight or whatever your time is, this is going to be my time. This is officially my time. And that's the time where you do whatever you want to do or nothing at all. You're not required to answer any questions. <laughs> answer, answer the phone or complete any task. This is just for you. Great advice, Teresa. So uh, that about wraps it up for this week for Relentless Transitions podcast. Thank you for listening. Um, don't forget to connect with us. Um, I am Teresa underscore C on Instagram and Triskelion underscore transitions on Instagram. Our email address is relentlesstransitions at gmail.com. Subscribe to us um, and we look forward to connecting again. Absolutely. See you next time. <laughs>